Hey guys, um, so if you've watched my last scattering Patreon tutorial number 13 discussing some of the new height field scatter features, I went over how to do everything manually using VEX or packed primitives um, or a node approach. But I also mentioned that I would actually build um, a custom HDA for Houdini to make this a lot easier for people to do and also for myself just so I don't have to always manually have to type in VEX when using this new system. So I built an HDA that makes this process really easy. It's going to be on my Patreon and I'll link to it in the comments on YouTube so you guys can just click on that and download it yourselves. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just give a quick demo just so you guys can see how it works. So we've got this scene here um, with our terrain scatter. Right now it's in packed primitive mode. Just so some of you guys know, packed primitives work now in uh, Redshift. And so it's scattering, I don't know, some maybe like 300,000 point, 100,000 point, uh, 164,000 points. So a good amount. Um, the viewport though is taking a little bit of a beating due to actually showing all these points. And this is where actual instances, or even better, file instances um, using proxies would just eliminate all this slow viewport and it would actually render very quickly. So just so we can see what this looks like, let's um, hit the IPR and I'll just kind of explain what we have here and then how the node works that I made. So we've got our scene and we're scattering, if we zoom in here, zoom in a little bit I believe we've got different types of objects here so let's just um, let's make this bigger so you guys can see so if we look in here if we just zoom in we've got these uh, or let's actually just zoom in more so you can tell the difference let's zoom in even further and yeah as you guys can see the viewport is just it's getting slaughtered and I'm not even using my um, one of my GPUs for display it's just the viewport just can't handle this much stuff this much geometry and as you can see if I keep zooming in there's just tons and tons of geometry um, so imagine if this was you know trees instead of just little boxes and stuff it would get a little it would slow down your viewport and so let's uh, bring up our render view again and okay now you can see what's going on here the shapes a little better so if we zoom in here you'll notice that we've got these boxes and we've got green boxes, yellow boxes, red boxes. And we've got spheres growing around our boxes. We've got blue and purple. And so the way that that's being created, if you guys watched my um, Patreon tutorial, I, I go over all the process. I'm not going to do all that right now. But basically, each each one of the uh, the objects has a weight. And so it's being distributed this way right and so let's say now we're we don't want to use packed primitives we want to actually use proxies and we're happy with this um, distribution or we want to use regular instances instead of using packed primitives what we could do is we'll just pause this and we're and we're happy we use the the uh, packed primitives we're happy with the way it looks and our distribution and stuff and we look dev did already what you could do is let's just make this bigger here. You'll notice that we've got our our height field. We used a mask, and that's being controlled by our box uh, our height field scatter one, which is the boxes, and our height field scatter two that's growing spheres around our boxes, and we want to now use instances. So instead of uh, packed primitives, so what we could do is this is what what I made that nifty HDA for and so what the um, HDA does is 
basically read in the attributes created by our height field scatter and our weights for our objects and uses regular instancing or instance file so you could read in your proxies from your hard drive instead of actually in your scene and in order for this to work you need to do two things before it actually starts working so again make sure that you have instance level instance sop level pack primitives activated and the reason why you need that activated is just so you speed up the the processing because these two nodes the height field scatter nodes use packed primitives inside of them so if we dive in here you'll notice that it's using a copy to points sop and it's it's using packed primitives so while it's not going to be instancing these objects that we have connected to it it's going to be using our our actual node objects that we're going to put down you still need to have packed primitives activated here just because it makes the processing stage during this step faster and <clears throat> the second thing you have to do is you actually need to disable or not disable but you need you need um, stand in objects so right now we're using the standard pack primitive workflow and it's just loading in our um, object merges right and what we need is we actually don't want to use these objects we need stand-ins so the reason why we need stand-in objects is because otherwise it's going to use these objects and we need something that redshift won't render <clears throat> but at the same time we're feeding that data into here so that it creates the attributes we need because if we if for example let's just go to the spreadsheet if we come into the spreadsheet you'll notice we have variants and if we disconnect these or if we convert this SOP the uh, scatter SOP to use to not instance the points you'll notice that our variant attribute was deleted so we need it to instance to new points and what we want we're going to disconnect these and we're going to use a line and we can just use that at default so we're going to just copy it. And the reason we need a line is so that points get generated, but these are, the line won't render in Redshift. It'll just be a stand-in. So if I actually go back to our, our viewport, you'll notice that pretty much it looks empty now. And if I render, you'll notice that our render is empty so which is fine that means it's super fast now right and what we're, we're gonna do is we're actually gonna process the uh, let's pause that the attributes that are scatter generates with the uh, HDA that I made so if you start typing HF short for height field it's gonna be grouped with all the other height field nodes which is great and so if you start typing HF and then scatter you'll get this new node the height field scatter redshift instancer and so we're gonna you wanna drop this in and you'll notice that we've got all these points but right now our attributes are our options are empty so this is how it comes in by default and you need to make as many of these nodes as you have scatter nodes. So since we have the boxes height field scatter and the spheres height field scatter, we want two of these. So we'll plug that back in down here. And we'll just call this um, instance instances boxes and spheres and now you could choose the parameters are in the mode so instance or instance file if you're loading a proxy from your hard drive that's not in your scene 
or a regular instance mode if your proxies are in your scene or other objects. And we have the tag group attribute and the objects to instance. And so the tag group attribute is the name of the height field scatter you're referencing. So this one's called boxes. So if we come into our geometry spreadsheet, you'll notice there's an attribute called tag right here and its name is boxes and that name changes to whatever is here so if I type in boxes 5 it's now boxes 5 right and so that's what uh, um, I'm referencing right here the tag group attribute is the tag data which is the name of the node of the height field node so just keep that in mind so for this we're gonna obviously call this boxes and then the objects to instance are the objects that you created connected to that one two three so we have three objects so let's make three and the object ID is the order that they're plugged in so object one two three and <clears throat> You can't have anything lower than one, so that's the default. And now you could just bring in the objects you want. So we're gonna bring in box one, box two, box three. And now for our second node, we're gonna call this spheres, because that's the name of the height field scatter we used earlier. We're gonna use, you have to use the same mode, so you can't mix and match you either, if you're going to start with instances, you have to use instances. If you're going to use instance file, all your um, HDAs that I made, the uh, height field redshift scatters, need to be in the same mode. So something to keep in mind. And we have two objects connected to our spheres. So one, two. And we're going to choose sphere object one, sphere object two. So now if we render this, we're going to get the same layout as we did with our pack primitives, except now it's instancing directly. So if I bring up our, our blank scene, and let's just save, and we hit render, and the problem is we'll end up with something blank. And you might be wondering, why is this blank, right? <clears throat> and so this is something important. The problem is that we still have instance SOP level pack primitives up here. And so this takes precedence. But we do want this active because it processes faster. But what happens is that our instance attributes don't take precedent anymore. So what we have to do is make sure that our height field scatter is unlocked. So you just right click it and unlock it and we're going to go inside here and you'll see this big network and inside you'll find the copy to points and you want to uncheck pack an instance we'll do the same thing here uncheck pack an instance and now if we come up here and we re-render and this will take a second not too long a couple seconds maybe to just process and boom we've got all our points and so we've got all our, our the same way we had them earlier with our pack primitives we've got all our points scattered around which is tons and tons of geometry right and so the great thing is now we could use proxies or reference our um, assets outside of our scene. So let's pause this for a second and let's let's just try that in a, an example. So I've got some trees that I made that are not in our scene. So if we come up here, they're not here. They're not in our scene. They're saved in the location where our project is. And so what we're gonna do is, instead of reference our objects, our boxes that we have in our scene, and instance them, we're gonna to switch to instance file mode. And we're gonna reference our trees. 
Now you could also use regular instance mode and using a Redshift proxy, if you come up here to the shelf and hit proxy, you could load in your proxy here. Where is it at? Proxy. You can load in your proxy here and then reference Redshift proxy. Oops. Here. So if we come in up here, you'll notice that we have Redshift proxy and you can select it if you want to do it that way. Or you could use the instance file method. So we're going to switch to instance file and we're going to point to our proxy. So to do that, use dollar sign hip, which is our our uh, project location. And then we're going to use a slash and then you I I have my proxies in a folder called proxies forward slash and then the name of the proxy. So I just copy pasted it from Windows Explorer. So here is my uh my proxies right here and so I'm just copying and pasting the name and so <clears throat> we're gonna just copy this again paste it and instead of fall I'm gonna use the uh, spring and for box 3 we're gonna use actually let's do uh, fall here and summer here. Oops. And let's do the same now for our second node. So we're going to switch to instance file. And the name of this, we'll just paste it in here, but the proxy is a different name. So this proxy is called chemise shrub summer and I'll copy paste it again but this time we'll use fall and so these are my tree proxies and let's save and now we're gonna re-render this and so notice how none of these files are in my scene they're referencing straight from the hard drive which is great because it it keeps your scenes clean and you could reference the proxies outside of your hard drive I mean outside of your scene that are in your your network or or whatever right and we're gonna hit render so this might take a second to process and let's see what happens the trees actually might be too big now that I think about it Oh, no, there they are. And look at that. A whole forest full of trees. And it scattered and, and placed them, you know, in, in a couple seconds in the time that I've been talking to you guys. You guys. Um, so if we uh, come up to our scene view, and let's just zoom out. And just look how fast this is processing. A hundred, uh, what was it, 160,000 trees, I believe. Um, or actually from up here oh wow yeah so a lot of trees <laughs> and each of these trees is a million polygons I believe from my collection and just look at that that's just incredible so we've got really fast viewport movement because we're in our viewport, we're using lines, which don't take up any resources, but we're instancing our proxies from our, our hard drive. Proxies aren't even in our scene, which keeps your scene super, super light, and it streams them directly straight to your um, GPU, straight into Redshift. And I mean, look at this. Incredible performance. And they just render in seconds. 
So yeah, hopefully you guys um, take advantage of this uh, HDA. It's a, it takes a little effort to set up. Like I said, there's a little couple things you got to do. Like you got to make sure that um, you swap to lines for the viewport to be light. You have to make sure that inside of the uh, scatters, you have to disable on the copy to points the pack and instance. And just name them correctly and reference your objects and you're, and you're good to go. So thanks again, guys, for all the support. Um, you guys are helping me make some cool tools for you guys. And, you know, you guys out there that uh, haven't joined or are interested in learning Houdini with Redshift, check out my Patreon and check out my YouTube channel for uh, basic tutorials on, on Redshift Basics. Thanks again for all the support and enjoy.